In Texas, people who can't afford an attorney must be provided a court-appointed lawyer within one day of asking for an attorney to be present, but that only applies to counties with more than 250,000 people. This is a two-tiered system, and it could put low-income defendants at a disadvantage. It's today's story from William Mahiro of the Texas Tribune. William, thank you so much for being here. And first, can you explain that second tier of this law and why was it put in place? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, you know, so about two decades ago, uh, the legislature decided uh, we needed to kind of revamp the Texas criminal justice system. And, and there were a lot of discrepancies across the state, uh, both involving how attorneys were appointed to those indigent clients, those clients that can't pay for an attorney, how those uh, indigency is determined, and, and then also, um, you know, how much attorneys are paid. And, and recognizing that in rural parts of the state, there was just not enough professionals, legal professionals, to serve those residents. Uh, they basically put in this provision that said, if you live in a county with less than 250,000 people, the county has three days to appoint that, that a court-appointed lawyer uh, upon request. And, and while that is uh, one kind of thing that highlights the discrepancy, there is a uh, a lot of other issues within the Texas criminal justice system in rural areas that that demonstrate there is a, a Texans are facing a very different um, justice system depending on where they live. Okay, and this of course causes a delay for them to get an attorney. What does that mean though for the defendants? Yeah, so I think it's hard to really say or pinpoint exactly what that could mean for a defendant, but spending more time in jail has a lot lot of consequences, whether that's loss of employment, loss of housing, and, and accepting a plea deal to perhaps just get out of jail and, and get back to your life can also carry pretty significant consequences like loss of custody of a child, more difficulty in securing future jobs and housing. So there's not exactly one uh, you know, downstream effect of not being able to get a lawyer appointed quickly, uh, but there are a lot of really significant life consequences that, that can result of this um, uh, shortage of, of rural lawyers. And are there any solutions that groups in those smaller areas have come up with to really try and get those attorneys to the defendants and get them the help that they might need? Yeah, so th there's been a number of uh, different kind of approaches to addressing this shortage. And one of the uh, primary ways they've, they've addressed that is by developing rural public defender offices, which essentially serve as uh, defense attorneys that are full-time working to represent and serve those communities. And those are in about 70 of Texas's 254 counties. And, and those you know, provide a, almost of a counterbalance to district attorneys and, and uh, uh, prosecutors in those parts of the state. Now, uh, lawmakers this session are also proposing a uh, loan forgiveness measure for attorneys working in rural parts of the state, which experts have told me would, would certainly be one way of attracting young attorneys to these less populated parts of the state. But other experts have said that putting in uh, educational pipelines like they have for uh, physicians um, to encourage rural residents to go into law is, is another potential solution. Okay, so there is some movement there at the legislature. Well, William, I know you'll be speaking at a panel at the Capitol tomorrow for a free public event on public defense, which will include this subject, and we understand that that starts at 9 o'clock. Thank you so much, and of course, we'll have more on this on our website on KXAN. Thank you, William.